Welcome to Smacky's Garage. Today we're going to be looking at cooling systems on classic cars such as this 1969 Mustang. We're going to look at not only how the cooling system works, but we're also going to look at the most common mistake that I see people make on the cooling systems on these vehicles. On the 1967 to 1970 Mustangs, if you didn't have factory AC and you had an engine that only required standard cooling, you'd get a 20 inch core radiator. This radiator would be mounted directly against the front radiator support of the vehicle. If you had a car that did have factory AC, or it was an engine, kind of like the big blocks that required heavy duty cooling, then they would put a 24 inch core radiator in it. These 24 inch core radiators would be mounted, they'd be saddle mounted. They'd be mounted down below and they'd be mounted up top. They would not be bolted directly to the radiator support. So no matter which vehicle you have, if you want to increase your cooling capacity and not go too far past stock or original, you can put the 24 inch radiator in it if you don't already have it. But you just need to make sure that you check your clearances between your fan and make sure nothing's going to come in contact because if it does, it's going to make a loud noise and make a mess. So having the correct radiator for the right engine is incredibly important to make sure that your temperature stays stable. I've seen a lot of people run these without the shrouds and just run the fan. That's not the right way to run these cars if you're looking for stable temperatures. You're better off running the shroud and a, a fan. I, you know, there are different fans you can look at. There are some that are thermal style, which is what I run. And then there are some that are flex style that the blades will actually flex as you go up in speed. I'm more a fan of the thermal style clutches on these fans and it provides, a, it provides good control of the temperature. The vehicles back in the 60s didn't have the standard cooling system with an overflow tank or an expansion tank that you see in today's vehicles. I'm probably going to add one to this vehicle because, you know, sometimes you do see some coolant dripping out. The reason why that happens is you have a pressurized cap here with multiple seals. When it hits a certain pressure, you know, the liquid's trying to expand, so it's going to try to move somewhere else. It's going to open up the lower seal, not the top seal. And when it opens that lower seal, it can then travel through the tube on the side to what would be an expansion tank in a car today. In these older cars, it would just transfer straight to the ground. So I've seen on some hot days when it's, when the system is expanding, you know, I do hit that pressure limit and a tiny bit of coolant will expand onto the ground. Now, when it cools off, it contracts. So as you start losing coolant, you need to watch it and you need to make sure you have the right amount in it at all times. Now, if you remember previously, I changed out the fitting on the intake manifold for the coolant. This is the part that was in the coolant line. And what you'll notice is it, it sits flush with the intake manifold. You can't just use something like this and expect it to work on a vehicle to give fluid to the heater. It's going to be a pain to get the air bubbles out and a pain to set up. If you look at what the correct style is, this is the correct style. You'll notice that below the threads, you're actually going to have a tube that's going to go into the intake manifold. When it goes into the intake manifold, its job is to make sure that picking up water and transferring the coolant to the heater core itself. So mistake number one, I used just something off the shelf of common parts when I should have used something like this. Now, something else I didn't know is these are actually different between the 428 and the 390 cars. So there's a different diameter tube down below that connects. So I have the correct one on there now, but this is the wrong one. So I have an extra 428 elbow if someone needs it. Now, the big mistake that I see a lot of people make with these vehicles is on the heater hose. I'm gonna tell you, I'll let you in for a little bit of a secret here. I also made the same mistake when I was setting it up. I went back to the manual and I looked at kind of what is the right orientation for the heater core and how it's supposed to be set up. Currently have it set up wrong. We're going to fix that in this video. On these vehicles, it's what's supposed to happen is your coolant's supposed to come up and out of this tube. So the top of the intake manifold, and it's supposed to go into the bottom of the heater core. It's not supposed to go to the top of the heater core. It's supposed to go to the bottom of the heater core. Now, the important, the reason why is because by going to the bottom of the heater core and filling up, you're going to make sure you don't have any air bubbles in it or air pockets. When we fill from the top down, 
it's gonna just fall straight down. And when it falls straight down, it's going to leave an air pocket. So you're not gonna get the right amount of heating efficiency out of your heater core. You know, when I look at cars that have been res restored kind of at shows, I'd say probably about 10 to 20% of them are running this in the incorrect orientation. The other 20% probably don't even have them hooked up, but then the rest of them are correct. But it, so when you set this up, make sure you set it up right if you're gonna be using the heater core for max efficiency. Unfortunately, after you set this up, you have to cut the tubes to the correct length. And when I cut them to the correct length, now the top tube isn't gonna reach where it needs to go. The bottom tube isn't gonna, is, it will reach the top, but I have to cut it. So what that means I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to take it and cut and splice a tube in. The only other way to correct it after it's installed is to take it off the heater core itself, which is underneath the dash. And you've probably seen me do this in the video before and understand why I'm not taking it apart. It's a big effort to take out that dash. So I picked these up off Amazon. It's, they're essentially splices for the cooling system. So I'm gonna be using it. I'm gonna put one of these directly in line. I'm gonna end up splitting the hose that is that needs to be shortened and adding the length to the other one. So I'm gonna split it. I'm gonna end up putting these two both in place to hold the, the splice hose together. All right, so to do this, I'm gonna, I have my brass fitting here that I'm gonna put in the coolant line. I'm gonna take the top line off first, hold it up in the air, then I'm gonna pull that bottom line off. And while that bottom line is off, I'm gonna measure it and then cut it so that it fits here. I don't have the two right tools to cut it right now, so I'm just gonna use 10 snips. All right, it's important you have a catch can or something under here to make sure that you catch any coolant that's gonna fall out. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut this, famous last words, I'm gonna cut this first. right here. And then by cutting this first, hoping I can save it from putting a lot of fluid on the ground. Okay. So with this up, I can now uh, Take this, just fitting into place. This one should reach here, no problem, which it does, perfect. Then this tube should reach here, which I'm gonna do underneath. But to do that, I'm gonna need to put two hose clamps, one on either side. So you can't really see it, but the splice is down here. You're not, no one's gonna really notice it, but it goes from the top up here now, and it goes down and it goes to the bottom of the heater core where it's supposed to, back up to the top, through, and then after it goes through, it goes back to the water pump. So everything's set up now exactly like it's supposed to be. All right, so we have the heating system now fixed. So now hopefully I can get those air pockets out of the heater core. Thanks for tuning in to Smacky's Garage. Next week, we're gonna do some more projects on the car, so don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.